We hear this question a lot. Is a pool worth it? Whether you're moving to Arizona for the first time or you're living in Arizona and considering a move, the pool or no pool debate is a serious one. While I can't make a sweeping statement about whether or not everyone should or should not have a pool at their home, I can offer up four discussion points that will help you to make the right decision for your family. These are the same talking points that my husband and I used when we were making this tough decision for ourselves. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you've been here before, thank you so much for coming back and for spending your time with me. My name is Lindsay and I'm a proud Anthem resident and your local realtor with the Wise Move AZ team at Realty One Group. On this channel, we have a lot of fun talking about all things Anthem and real estate every single Thursday, and we absolutely love having you along for the ride. A quick search of the active listings in Anthem show that about 40% of homes have a pool in their yard. We're confident that this number is reasonably indicative of the number of homes in Anthem that have a private pool, give or take 5% or so. So how do you decide if you'll be part of the 40% of households that have a private pool or the 60% of households that don't? Decisions, decisions. The thing is, the decision to have a pool is really quite a personal one. It depends on you, your family, and your financial situation. I hope that these four considerations can help to make that decision a bit easier. Number one, safety. This absolutely has to be the top consideration. Having your own pool can be a great way to beat the summer heat without having to pack up all of your stuff and head to the community center or a friend's house. The convenience of having your own pool is huge. We totally get it. But having a pool also comes with a ton of responsibility. Keeping the pool area safe and supervised for children and adults takes diligence and constant attention. It's your responsibility around the clock, both when the pool is in use and when it isn't. Thankfully, there are so many ways to increase the safety of your pool. You can use safety latches on the doors, self-closing doors, fences, alarms, cameras, and so on. A quick search on the internet will give you a wealth of ideas of what you can do. If the pool home you're looking to buy doesn't already have these safety features, you'll need to budget for them. Also, it's important to know that these safety features don't remove the need for constant monitoring. We're not big on fear mongering, but according to the World Health Organization, drowning is a leading cause of unintentional death worldwide. We would hate for you or anyone else to become a part of these statistics. If diligent supervision and safeguarding the pool area are too daunting for you and you expect children or adults who require supervision to be in your home and yard, then you may want to opt for a home without a pool. Make friends with someone who has a pool or move into a community that has a community pool like Anthem. Here in Anthem, we are so lucky. Not only do we have a pool, but we have a water park and splash pads. If you'd like to check those out, click in the cards for this video. Number two, maintenance. I hate to say it because I love floating in the pool as much as the next guy, but pools are a lot of work. They need weekly cleaning and maintenance checks and every once in a while, they need major work done. You can do this work yourself in some cases or you can hire it out. If you're planning to do the work yourself, the first thing you need to consider is if you know what you're doing. If not, you need to take the time to educate yourself. There are chemical balances that need to be carefully maintained and replacement schedules that need to be adhered to. Do you have the time to commit to regular cleanings and maintenance? If so, I recommend that you set a calendar reminder and do it at the same time each week. My dad makes a point of doing all of his pool work on Sunday afternoon. Do you have the equipment you need? If not, you need to build this into your budget. If you're thinking you'll probably hire out all of your pool cleaning and maintenance, that's absolutely fine too. And in fact, it segues perfectly into my next point. Number three, cost. Did I say pools were a lot of work? 
I should have also added that pools can get expensive. The cost of regular cleanings, annual maintenance, and repairs can add up quickly. You can save a little money by taking on the regular cleanings and the labor part of maintenance and repairs. But don't forget, if you're doing the work yourself, you still need to budget for all of your supplies. Costs may also pop up in unexpected ways. For example, your homeowner's insurance may be higher because you have a pool. Your utilities will also be higher if you have a pool. Evaporation is a real thing here in the desert, so you'll typically spend more on water than a non-pool home. Also, the pool equipment will draw additional electricity. These added costs are usually quite manageable as long as you know what to expect and can budget accordingly. It's always helpful if you can get a year's worth of water and electricity bills from the previous owner before buying their home. While there are a lot of things that contribute to utility usage, this can give you a good starting point. You can also contact local pool maintenance and supply companies to better understand the costs in your area. If you decide to heat your pool in the cooler months, this can increase your costs dramatically. My parents once decided to heat their pool over Christmas. They had over 30 guests coming in from colder climates and thought that they would love it. While even heated, the combination of the pool temperature and the air temperature was too much. And the total amount of time the pool was used was probably less than half an hour. Needless to say, they weren't too pleased when they received an over $500 gas bill for heating their pool for one week. Additionally, every once in a while, your pool will require major work like resurfacing. This can set you back a few thousand dollars depending on the finish, the size, and cost of labor. We recommend setting money aside every year to soften the blow when these bigger ticket items pop up. I promise that I'm not saying these things to deter you from getting a pool. I just want you to make this decision fully informed. You just need to make sure that the joy of having and using the pool is equal to or even outshines the cost. For many people, it absolutely does, especially when the temperature is over 110 for the fifth day in a row. Number four, use. How much will you use a pool? Be honest with yourself. The most common complaint we hear about pools is not about cost or safety, it's about the fact that people don't use them as much as they thought they would. This means that they have this big dangerous water hole in their backyard that's costing them money every year and not getting a ton of benefit from it. Ouch. I should clarify that we rarely hear this complaint from people who live in Arizona year round. We typically hear this from our winter visitors or snowbirds who are coming from colder climates. When they're buying their new home, the thought of owning a pool seems perfect. They have grand plans to be in the pool every day until they realize that the pool is 70-ish degrees and it's too cold to be hanging out in in the winter months. Initially, they think, no problem, I'll just get a heater until they find out that gas is expensive and the pool still feels cold. Remember my Christmas story? If you're going this route, I strongly recommend that you consider solar heating for the pool. It's going to cost much less than gas in the long run. The other thing to consider is if you have other pools available to you. On the hottest day of an Arizona summer, there is no amount of air conditioner that even comes close to as good as jumping in a pool feels. If you have friends or family that have pools that you can use, or as I mentioned before, if you have a community pool available to you, it may become less imperative that you have a pool of your own. Anyways, think long and hard about how much you'll actually use the pool. If you're away from home in the hot summer months when it's actually warm enough to use the pool, you may want to rethink having a pool of your own. Even if you live in Arizona year round, if you know your family and you're just not going to have the time or inclination to hang out in the backyard to use your own pool, Maybe not having a pool in your backyard is a better decision. On the other hand, if you know that you'll be floating in there every summer afternoon with a cocktail in hand, or that the kiddos will be out there every single weekend, it makes a lot more sense. So there you have it. What do you think? I hope that this video has given you some food for thought. 
Are you leaning towards a pool home or no pool? In the end, my husband and I decided that we couldn't justify having a pool at this point in our lives. Thankfully, we can use the community pool or my parents' pool on the days where the heat becomes unbearable. I would love to hear your thoughts. If you're curious about homes currently for sale in Anthem with and without pools, click on the corresponding links in the description box below. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to our channel, and leaving me a comment. Lastly, if you'd like to check out the Anthem Water Park, click to watch this video up top. Or if you'd like to tackle the equally controversial solar versus no solar debate when buying a home in Arizona, click to watch this video on the bottom. Enjoy those, and I'll see you next Thursday.